Hello everybody, this is Freya and I'm Jason. We're bringing you today's episode. <laughs> We're bringing you today's episode of 10 Minute Reviews. Whew. Man, I don't know what just happened. As always guys, please hit the like and subscribe button. We're a small family channel with a small family dog, medium sized family dog, and we just love to bring you guys books. Books, authors, things to read, so please support us. We would appreciate it. We're going to do this anyway, but we would definitely appreciate it. So today, I want to talk about a new book and a new author that I've not talked about up to this point. It falls under a lot of the, the previous genres we've talked about, the fantasy type worlds, lit RPG, but definitely different. The, the, this lit RPG is done very, very differently. The world is interesting, fairly compact because it only occurs in one little town, but the world building and how the, the I don't want to call it a system because this isn't one of those system apocalypse type, type books. This is, you know, a its own little world, characters born in this world, and so on and so forth. But the way the lit RPG is is done is 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 different. It's different, and it falls under a genre that we've talked about in the past. So this book is called Casual Farming One. It's by Wolf Locke and Mike Caliban, and it's a series. I'm I am in book three, book four, right now. I just finished the first book yesterday. I wanted to talk about it with you guys. The uh, the main character, actually, let me back this up. I'll talk about the four usual categories that I talk about. The world, characters, the plot, and the writing style. So the world, the world is your typical kind of fantasy-ish, almost video game type world. It's lit RPG in that they have classes, they have levels, but it is almost never talked about. Classes are kind of obvious, people have their own specialties, but, uh, but like levels are briefly touched, briefly mentioned, and then really never talked about again. Even by book three, book four, if the character has progressed past level one, I have no clue. There's no talk of experience or anything along those lines. But, again, it's almost like video game-ish in that the characters have a certain number of actions per day that they can use, and, like, and, and those actions generally pertain to things within their class. I mean, you don't use an action if you're swinging a sword at somebody or, you know, riding a horse to town or, or eating food, but, you know, if you're a... If you're a farmer, you know, you've got X number of actions per day and say you need to clean the rust off of your shovel. Depending on how rusty it is, that might take one action, that might take two actions, that might take three actions. It also still takes time. still takes time. Some things still take time. They've got the usual inventory, personal inventory, um, land or farm inventories, uh, shop inventories, guild hall inventories, stuff like that. So you've got the usual, you know, pull a sword out of thin air, pull food out of thin air, pull, you know, a pie out of thin air, but uh, um, but outside of that, again, there's no there's no experience, there's no levels. There's a really funny thing that goes on with the cookbook. <laughs> it's really amusing, and as you get further into the series, the cookbook is definitely kind of turning into its own supporting character, with its own personality, and and a little bit of independence. It's it's pretty funny. It's a pretty funny read at times, like during the blizzard when you, know, you walk out and the cookbook is bundled up in kitchen towels. Um, now, the main character, the main character, his name is Jason. I want to say Jason Hutton, something along those lines, but his name is Jason. And he is a city boy that inherited a farm from a crazy uncle. So that's how the book starts. He comes on down to, to this little town, comes from the big city to this little town, to find this old, run-down, beat-up farm. And decides what the heck. I'm going to make a go of it. And he starts farming. He starts trying to learn how to farm. Got almost no money. He's got very few resources. They're attacked by by uh, monsters pretty much every day, depending on the season. That's another interesting thing. The seasons are basically 90 or 91 days each, and there's a running countdown to them, spring, summer, fall. They all end with a festival. And then at midnight, a big ding occurs that everybody can hear, and like the summer to autumn, you know, it's it's... 95 degrees out, sunny, midnight, well it's not sunny at night, but 95 degrees out, sunny, sun goes down, but it's still, you know, nice and warm and, and pleasant, smells like summer, and then midnight comes and ding, fall has begun, the leaves immediately turn brown, cold winds start blowing through, I mean, it's, it's just like that. Um, tornadoes are basically sentient monsters, <laughs> it's, it's pretty... It's pretty amusing. It's, it's definitely, like I said, very, very different. So Jason is the main character, and he's just trying to make a go out of the farming thing. He is basically a, a, just a good guy, 
uh, not too bright at times, but just a good guy and clever in his own way and definitely hardworking. Then you've got Jeremiah, who's a local rancher, extraordinarily wealthy, has a huge, huge, huge ranch. Then you have basically the four main businesses in town, which are a shop owned by Paulina. Then you've got a a uh, inn owned by Viola, Viola, although she barely shows up in the book. Then you've got the healer, uh, Teresa, and then you've got the guild hall and Tess. And the guild hall is where all the adventurers go because they're the main business around this town at the moment is a dungeon. And it's a dungeon. And that therein kind of goes the plot of the book. There's a new event occurring with the dungeon and things go dramatically sideways and it falls to our intrepid heroes uh, Tess Paulina the uh, even Hank the constable basically the sheriff uh, but mostly Tess Paulina Teresa and Jason to try and control this event and try and make it safe before it just destroys the entire town and that's and, and you've got a few other you know whacked out nut job evil people who just generally not nice people that show up throughout the book, but it mostly just focuses on these four. And it's an interesting mix of slice of life and, and um, you know, a, an overarching plot. In this case, it's the, the event going on with the, the, um, with the dungeon and, you know, a little bit of the mystery behind it and how they, how they deal with it and the clever ways that they try and deal with it. Now, when you get to the writing style, this book, it's, the writing style is very much slice of life. It's, interesting like the characters aren't super snarky but just the way he builds this world and the way the characters act it brings a chuckle to you it's pretty funny it's definitely gripping um, I actually lost some sleep the other night because I just could not not finish the book so I just uh, I just had to keep going and then as soon as I finished the book I had to start book two and yeah I was I was tired at work but it's, it's fascinating. It's hard for me to describe exactly how the writing style is so gripping, but it is. It's gripping. It holds your attention. It's interesting. You want to know more. He builds these mysteries, little mysteries, and, and these little solutions that always seem to go sideways. Builds them out very, very well. And personal interactions, he, he does try and build various relationships. Um, some of them fail, some of them succeed. The only real knock I put on book one is the propensity for violence of the guild leader, which, okay, you're, you're a warrior guild leader or adventurer's guild leader, okay, that makes sense. You're, you're, you live by the sword, die by the sword, you know, a, a warrior, a fighter, a battler, absolutely. It still isn't a good thing to include in books, you know, knocking out your significant other you know, punches to the face become a normal thing in, in book one. And so that's the only real knock I put on, on the book. Otherwise, it's a fascinating book. So if you guys haven't checked it out, after you hit the like and subscribe buttons, guys, go check out Casual Farming 1 by Wolf, Locke, and Mike Caliban. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We will catch you guys next time. Bye now.